Right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Russell. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present my work today. And I will be talking to you about my project, which involves investigating the role of YAP signaling in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. And as you are all well aware, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, or ICC, is a rare form of liver cancer, which is often diagnosed at an advanced or a metastatic stage. And because there are very few treatment options available, this means that the five-year survival rate can be as low as 15%. So there is a dramatic need to develop new therapies for ICC. But the development of new therapies requires the use of a reliable model system. And while there are existing animal models of ICC, they have fairly major limitations. For example, they involve the transplantation of human ICC cells into immunocompromised mice. They require oncogenic activation of hepatocytes, which limits the number of genetic alterations that can be induced simultaneously and is subject to technical variation. They um, require very long generation times, or they require challenging surgical techniques and are not very efficient. So our lab was interested in developing a new model of ICC. And specifically, we wanted to develop a mouse model which allowed for easy genetic manipulation of tumor cells, rapid and robust generation of these tumors, growth of tumors in immunocompetent mice, and we also wanted the tumors to recapitulate key hallmarks of human ICC. So to do this, we turn to liver organoids, which have been developed in recent years and are ideal for this system because they are derived from biliary epithelial cells and they can be cultured in vitro. So to develop this new liver organoid-mediated ICC model, we isolated biliary epithelial cells from mice and we culture them into liver organoids. Then we use CRISPR-Cas9 technology to engineer in specific mutations to the organoids. And because this is all done in vitro, theoretically any combination of mutations could be engineered. But we decided to focus on mutations that are commonly found in human ICC samples. So we engineered in deletions into P53. We introduced an oncogenic form of KRAS. And we engineered in deletions of SMAD4. And all three of these genes are found to be mutated in anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of human ICC samples. And for the rest of this presentation, I will call these triple mutant organoids PKS for short. So the first thing we did after generating these PKS organoids was to test their growth in immunocompetent mice. So we injected about 1 million of these PKS organoids subcutaneously into mice. And what we found was that there was rapid tumor growth. And as you can see on the tumor growth curve on the right, we, within three weeks, we had nice tumors forming, and these tumors continued to grow over time. And when we looked at the histology of these tumors, we were excited to see that they did recapitulate key features of human ICC. So on the left, you can see an H&E stain for a resulting tumor from these um, PKS organoid cells injected into mice. And we have this nice glandular structure forming, as well as a dense tumor uh, reactive stroma, which is, consists of myofibroblasts and endothelial cells and other cell types recruited from the host mouse. And they're not actually from the uh, tumor cells themselves, which are stained on the right with a pancytokeratin, a biliary marker, which demonstrates that these tumor cells retain their biliary identity. And while uh, injection of these tumors subcutaneously allows for easy retrieval of the tumors and um, easy growth, we wanted a more representative model of human ICC. So we also injected our PKS organoids directly into the livers of mice. And you can see in the gross image on the left that when these organoids are injected directly into the liver. We have nice tumors that grow, again, within a, a time scale of three to eight weeks. And as shown in the H&E stain on the right uh, of the tumor border, you can see that these tumors do indeed grow directly in the liver. As you can see, the endogenous hepatocytes of the mouse liver on the top and the ICC tumor on the bottom. So now that we had created this new ICC model system, we wanted to use it to ask biologically relevant questions. And so a natural question for us to ask was to uh, assess the role of the HIPPO signaling pathway in ICC tumor genesis, as our lab has a long history of studying the HIPPO signaling pathway, which is involved in organ size regulation and cell proliferation within the liver and many other organs. And so as a brief overview of this pathway, um, the main effector of this pathway is the YAP protein and its homolog TAS. And 
uh, when the HIPPO signaling pathway is on, the upstream kinases MST1 and 2 and LATS1 and 2 phosphorylate YAP, and they target it for proteasomal degradation. And this prevents YAP from inducing expression of target genes. When the HIPPO signaling pathway is inactivated through upstream signals, such as uh, mechanical cues or inputs from other signaling pathways, YAP is no longer phosphorylated. It can then translocate into the nucleus, where it interacts with TIAD transcription factors to induce target gene expression and um, cell proliferation and uh, re uh, anti-apoptotic functions. And importantly, in human ICC, uh, although the components of the HIPPO pathway are not frequently mutated, uh, nuclear accumulation of YAP is seen in anywhere from 85 to 95 percent of human ICC specimens. And we confirmed this ourselves. So on the left-hand side of the, the slide, you can see a human ICC tumor which has been stained for YAP. And the arrows point to uh, tumor cells which have this robust nuclear accumulation of YAP. And importantly, on the right, you can see a, a section of one of our mouse uh, PKS uh, tumors, which has also been stained for YAP. And you can see, again, strong nuclear YAP accumulation within the tumor. So suggesting that YAP may play an important role in driving ICC tumor genesis. So to test this, we um, developed organoids which can inducibly have YAP deleted. And to do this, we isolated biliary epithelial cells from mice which contained uh, the YAP gene, which is floxed, and a doxycycline-inducible CRE. And from these mice, we generated liver organoids and engineered in R3 mutations to generate the PKS organoids. So in this system, when you uh, inject these organoids into wild-type mice and administer doxycycline, YAP is deleted specifically in the tumor cells and not in any other cell type in the host mouse. So in order to better recapitulate what will be seen in a human, we allowed the tumors to form before DOX administration, and um, then we administered DOX for up to three weeks to look at the effect on the tumors. And what was very surprising to us was that DOX treatment and thus YAP deletion had very little effect on tumor growth. So you can see on the left a, a PKS tumor which has been treated for doxycycline for three weeks. So in this specific experiment, tumors were allowed to grow for two weeks, and then starting at the two-week time point, dox was administered for three weeks, so tumors were then harvested at five weeks post-injection. And then this YAP stain, you can see that the tumor cells themselves are indeed negative for YAP, so um, the YAP hasn't been deleted from the tumor cells. And on the right is a growth curve of tumors from mice which were either not treated with DOX in blue or received DOX treatment for three weeks in red. And you can see that the uh, administration of DOX had almost no effect on tumor growth. So to get a better sense of why this would be the case, we developed a YAP activity reporter construct. And in this construct, we have GFP under the control of the uh, PGK promoter, which allows for constitutive GFP expression in tumor cells. And we have M cherry under the control of uh, the TIAD transcription factor binding site. So when YAP is activated, it will bind to TIAD and it will drive M cherry expression. So this reporter was integrated into our organoids via lentivirus. And you can see in the top right um, organoid images from these um, organoids in vitro that are nicely expressing both GFP and M cherry. Then when we injected these organoids into mice and allowed tumors to form and stained for YAP, you can see dramatic nuclear YAP accumulation within the tumor cells, but surprisingly, very little expression of M. cherry within tumor cells, uh, which is, it seems to be limited to a subset of mice. And we further confirmed that there was low expression of YAP by looking um, at YAP target genes through RNA and C2 hybridization. And we looked at amont al 2 and CYR61, both well-characterized YAP target genes, and we found that there was, while there was expression of these target genes in tumor cells, it was at very low levels, suggesting that YAP signaling is actually not very active in the tumor cells, despite the fact that there is nuclear YAP accumulation. And we further confirmed that YAP deletion from tumor cells um, had no effect on proliferation. So for this experiment, we treated tumors with doxycycline for four days, harvested the tumors, and then stained for YAP. KI67 as a marker of proliferation, and GFP to mark specifically the tumor cells. And what we found were that we were able to identify both YAP negative and YAP 
positive tumor cells that were proliferating. And when we quantified this, we found that there was no difference in the proliferation status of tumor cells based off of their expression of YAP, suggesting that YAP um, is actually dispensable for tumor growth in the context of PKS organoids. And while this was surprising, we thought maybe this was due to the specific combination of mutations that we had engineered into these organoids. So we wondered if we created a organoids with a different mutation profile, would this affect their YAP dependency and would it also affect the tumor morphology? So for this, we decided to engineer in mutations into ARID1A. And this is a component of the Swiss SNF chromatin remodeling complex. It has been shown to regulate YAP and biliary epithelial cells in disease settings in the liver. And importantly, ARID1A is a, um, known to be mutated in upwards of 20% of human ICC specimens. So we went back to our liver organoids, and once we had organoids which were um, mutant for P53 and contained oncogenic KRAS, we then in, used CRISPR-Cas9 to engineer in mutations in ARID1A to create triple mutant organoids, which I will now call PK-ARID. And when we injected these tumors subcutaneously into wild-type mice, uh, we also saw that these tumors grow, grew very rapidly, but one of the most interesting findings that was immediately apparent to us was there was an obvious histological difference between the PKS and the PK arid tumors. So shown on the left is a PKS tumor stained um, with H&E to look at the histology. And again, you can see these nice glandular structures that have formed. The PK arid tumors, on the other hand, have a more solid growth pattern, which more uh, represents a poorly differentiated ICC. And furthermore, when we stained for vimentin, which is typically a mesenchymal cell marker, in the PKS tumors, we found that the vimentin staining was limited to cells of the stroma and that the actual tumor cells themselves were negative for vimentin, whereas PK arid, the tumor cells themselves were positive for vimentin, which in the literature, uh, vimentin positive um, ICC tumor cells is associated with a more poorly differentiated phenotype and also a, um, a worse prognosis. So this does suggest that the mutation profile does indeed affect the actual phenotype of the tumor. We were interested to see whether YAP activity was different in these organoids. And what we found when we looked at these PK arid tumors when we stained for YAP, which is shown on the left, you can see, again, very robust uh, nuclear accumulation of YAP in the tumor cells. But excitingly, when we looked at our M-cherry reporter, we saw a pretty robust M-cherry expression within the tumor cells. And when we looked at target gene expression, again, through in situ uh, RNA and C2 hybridization, um, looking at AMOT L2 and CYR61, we did, again, see um, expression of these target genes within tumor cells, suggesting that PK arid tumors may um, have higher YAP activity than their PKS counterparts. And unfortunately, due to the catawampus situation created by COVID, I have not been able to test the effect of YAP deletion in these tumors in time for this conference, although that is definitely a, a, um, an aim of the project moving forward. So just to uh, wrap up what I've talked to you about today. We have generated a new liver organoid um, transplanted ICC model, and this allows for precise genetic manipulation of tumor cells um, and rapid tumor growth in immunocompetent mice. And this is very amenable to um, high throughput um, studies down the line. And surprisingly, what we found was that YAP activity in the PKS organoid genotype was actually dispensable for tumor growth, despite the fact that these tumors had robust YAP nuclear accumulation. And we also found, based off of our uh, results with the PK arid tumor genotype, that the mutation profile of the tumor does have a dramatic influence on the phenotype. So moving forward, we want to further characterize the difference between PKS and PK arid tumors. And um, also to look at the effect of YAP signaling in the PK arid tumors. But uh, that is all I have to talk to you about today. I would like to thank all of my lab members for their help, particularly Michael Dill, the postdoc who initially established this project. And I would like to thank my funding sources, especially the Kalangia Carcinoma Foundation. And I would be very happy to take any questions. Um, thank you for your attention. Hello from Boston. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the Kalangia Carcinoma Foundation for supporting our research and for giving us the opportunity to present our work uh, today. Um, as our title implies, uh, in our work, we target B7H3 using 
chimeric antigen receptor or CAR for short T cells. And our study focuses on intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. So intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma is the type of cholangiocarcinoma that arises from within the liver, as you can see on this schematic over here. Uh, the reason we decided to work on this tumor is because uh, it's the second most common primary tumor of the liver and the incidence of the disease is increasing rapidly. Uh, it's a disease which has late presentation and that leads to an overall dismal prognosis for the patients. Uh, only a small minority of patients are able to undergo curative surgery. And even among those, one out of four will have an early recurrence within six months. That leads to a very poor uh, survival of uh, about 10 to 40 percent uh, in five years. The other problem with this disease is that there is a very slow development of new uh, treatments. The reason for that is that uh, the molecular targets uh, to that disease are very infrequent and um, targeted therapeutics so far have not been very effective. So in our strategy, we decided to use chimeric antigen receptor uh, T cells or CAR T cells for short. Um, this is a very advantageous strategy. The reason for that is um, CAR T cells can have very rapid uh, generation of polyclonal T cells. They demonstrate very strong cytotoxic activity and uh, of course they're independent of human leukocyte um, antigen or HLA class 1 uh, expression on uh, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma which in previous studies we found that uh, has a very defective expression on tumor cells. The other reason we chose this strategy is because we have uh, available uh, reliable probes and methodology um, for performing our experiments and uh, uh, and going ahead with this study. In, uh, in this schematic, you can see um, the generation of a B7H3 specific CAR construct. Um, in general, uh, CARs are recombinant receptors which are composed of an extracellular uh, antigen recognition moiety, which is generally derived from an antibody, which is linked via a hinge and a transmembrane domain to an intracellular signaling domain uh, that includes, uh, in some cases, co-stimulatory domains and uh, T-cell activation moieties. And on the right side of the schematic, you can see uh, the three different generation generations of uh, CAR T-cells. Uh, and as we go on with each generation, we have more co-stimulatory domains. Uh, in the next schematic, you can see how CAR T-cells work. Um, this is on the left side, you can see a T cell, which is expressed in a chimeric antigen receptor, uh, which in turn recognizes the tumor antigen on the ICC cell. And once uh, this recognition happens, we have expansion of T cells and we have a release of pro-inflammatory cytokines uh, and activation of immune cells. Uh, so overall, um, this is a very compelling strategy. Now, what about the target of our CAR T cell based therapy? For this, we have used the tumor antigen B7H3. And specifically, we target the, um, the epitope of B7H3, which is defined by our monoclonal antibody 376.96. Um, B7H3 is a member of the B7 co inhibitory and co stimulatory uh, ligand family. And in fact, it, this molecule plays a very important role in tumor, in tumor immunity. On the right side, you can see a schematic of this molecule. It comes in two isoforms. Uh, it comes in, in one isoform, which uh, contains uh, two pairs of an immunoglobulin V-like and immunoglobulin C-like domain, or in a, in a smaller isoform, which only contains one pair. Uh, the reason B7H3 is important in tumor immunity is because uh, it has the ability to suppress uh, the function of uh, T cell in the tumor microenvironment. And as a result, it can promote tumor genesis by suppressing this tumor antigen specific immune response. And actually, in a study that we recently did, we saw that among a, a long array of tumors, B7H3 is associated with a very poor prognosis. Uh, along uh, along uh, many tumor types. Now, B7H3 is a very attractive target 
for uh, immunotherapy and specifically for CAR T cell immunotherapy. First of all, it's highly expressed on interhepatic cholangiocarcinoma cell lines, but also on uh, interhepatic cholangiocarcinoma surgically resected tumors. It's expressed on both differentiated uh, ICC cells, but also on cancer initiating cells, and I'll show you why this is important. And uh, it's also expressed not only on primary tumors, but uh, also on metastatic tumors, according to our studies. Um, of course, it's uh, targeting B7H3 appears to be safe, given that B7H3 has a very limited distribution in normal tissues. And in fact, this has been corroborated in several clinical, clinical trials, uh, which have demonstrated uh, minimal or no toxicity when B7H3 targeting strategies are applied to patients. And now let's look at each of these components individually. Here uh, you can see very well that uh, B7H3 is expressed on ICC specimens. Uh, and on the left side, on the left panel, you can see immunohistochemical analysis of an ICC specimen, which stains very positive for B7H3. And in fact, most of the tumors we have tested uh, stain positive for B7H3. And then on the right side, on the right panel, you can see uh, how with um, flow cytometric analysis, uh, B7H3 is uh, positive uh, in all the tumors we have tested so far. Here you just see an example of, uh, of two uh, tumors we tested. Next, uh, in the following slide, uh, you can see in a systematic review that we recently performed that B7H3 is very highly expressed, not only among all the tumor types that were analyzed, but it's very it's expressed with very high frequency uh, among biliary tumors, and that's among uh, more than 170 patients with biliary tumors. Furthermore, you can see that uh, B7H3 is very highly expressed uh, in uh, ICC cell lines, both ones that uh, we've created with our, our, our collaborators, but also on cell lines uh, for ICC, which are commercially available. Uh, so that's an additional advantage. And then here you can see very well that B7H3 is very highly expressed on cancer initiating cells. And in fact, that's a, a very important fact because according to the stem cell uh, to the cancer stem cell theory or the cancer initiating cell theory, those cells, cancer initiating cells, have to be eliminated for a therapy to be effective. And that's because cancer initiating cells are the cells that are mainly responsible for the metastatic spread and recurrence of uh, malignant diseases. Uh, furthermore, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can see here that B7H3 is very minimally expressed on normal tissues, and that's a panel of uh, multiple normal uh, normal tissues where B7H3 is very minimally expressed. And of course, uh, that's extremely important for the safety of any B7H3 targeting strategy. Uh, and although we know that B7H3 has minimal expression on normal tissues, uh, the safety is corroborated by findings of clinical trials where B7H3 targeting with different immunotherapeutic strategies has demonstrated minimal or no toxicity. And the worst toxicity was just some minimal um, uh, hepatotoxicity, which was just transient um, and caused no other problems to patients. So having all that information, we went ahead and tested the, uh, the efficacy, anti-tumor efficacy of CAR T cells against ICC in vitro. And here you can see very well that uh, with our interferon gamma release assay, CAR T cells have the ability to recognize um, ICC cells in vitro. And when we tested the, the anti-tumor effect of uh, B7H3 CAR T cells, we saw that uh, B7H3 CAR T cells completely eradicated uh, ICC cells in vitro. So having that, all those promising results, we went ahead uh, and uh, performed experiments in vitro. So first we developed a model for um, an orthotopic model of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. And here in the figure, we show you how we orthotopically inject ICC cells into the livers of mice. And that leads to a, to a development of tumors which are B7H3 positive. Uh, as shown by this immunohistochemical analysis picture. Uh, and so having, having uh, created this model, we went ahead 
and uh, treated the mice that uh, had developed intrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas. But as you can see in this figure here, uh, although the mice were treated, their tumors are, as seen by bioluminescent imaging, continue to grow instead of becoming smaller. So we had to go back to the drawing board and see why this happens. And uh, we thought that this is because of two reasons. One is uh, uh, likely that uh, the tumor microenvironment um, induces some escape mechanisms which lead ICC cells to avoid attack by CAR T cells. And the second reason we think this happens is because there is poor trafficking of CAR T cells into the tumor. Speaking of the first parameter, the tumor microenvironment, the hypoxia, the acidic pH, and the high extracellular adenosine levels, all that lead to, uh, to a lower antigen expression. They also upregulate the immunosuppressive molecules that are present in the tumor microenvironment, and of course can suppress uh, the immune cell function. So in order to counteract the tumor microenvironment, we decided to use low dose radiation therapy. And as you can see here, uh, the tumor microenvironment, specifically hypoxia and acidic pH, decreased the expression of B7H3 on tumor cells. However, when we treated cells with low dose radiation, you can see uh, that B7H3 expression was upregulated very nicely on ICC cells. Now, speaking of, uh, of trafficking of CAR T cells, um, we thought that this might be a reason why our strategy was not effective because um, trafficking can be affected by first the ligand receptor interaction, but second, it can be affected by the interstitial fluid pressure, which can reach up to 100 millimeters of mercury in the tumor. And so to counteract this, we decided to inject CAR T cells through the portal vein. And so we had to come up with, with uh, a method to do this. And here in this slide, you can see how we do it. We eviscerate the bowel and using a very thin 32 gauge, uh, gauge syringe, we inject T cells uh, directly into the portal vein of the mice. However, um, this led to several complications. Um, as you can see from this schematic, most of our mice after this procedure um, despite that this procedure was, was done uh, according to the protocol, um, most of the mice died very rapidly after the procedure. And so this, po this poses the question, why, was, uh, why did this happen? And so we came up with a whole list of uh, factors of, of why this might have happened. There might have been pretreatment factors, procedural factors, uh, post-operative factors, or factors related to the to the B7H3 specific CAR T cell uh, itself. And uh, now we are devising strategies to overcome uh, those problems. So for the pretreatment factors, uh, we are now engrafting a lower number of tumor cells into mice. For procedural factors, uh, we use pathogen-free um, we use pathogen, pathogen free um, materials to do our experiments. We have a decreased number of CAR T cells in order to decrease the volume. Uh, and then for post op factors, we use a more aggressive resuscitation, which has led to a better survival of mice. We use uh, Legia artis analgesia and we also use great uh, or improved post op care. Uh, and this uh, has led to decreased. Um, mortality of our mice. And now, uh, speaking of CAR T cells, what we are doing is we have collected all the all the tumors from mice um, and we're doing histopathological examination and uh, we are thinking and we are, uh, we are analyzing the option of uh, administering CAR T cells directly into the tumor. Of course, uh, many of those things have been frozen because of uh, coronavirus, but uh, we are, we are uh, doing those as we speak. So uh, what are the conclusions from this? First, we can conclude that b 7 h is a very attractive target for immunotherapy and specifically for immunotherapy of ICC. Second, CAR T cell based therapy is a very promising and of course safe strategy from the for the treatment of ICC. And thirdly, our ongoing experiments are focusing now on two things. First, optimizing our ICC animal models, and second, counteracting the immunosuppressive tumor microenvironment, which seems to play a role um, in our results. Of course, uh, I would like to uh, thank all of our collaborators, both at MGH and Dr. Doty, 
from uh, UNC and uh, the Colangio Carcinoma Foundation for all of their support. Thank you. Dear member, dear guest, I have nothing uh, to disclose. So Colangio Carcinoma or CCA is the most common biliary malignancy. CCA is a highly lethal neoplasm with a five-year survival rate less than 10% and with limited treatment options. Moreover, CCA is a desmoplastic tumor with a dense tumor microenvironment, as you can see here on this photomicrograph. However, uh, the immune response to uh, immune checkpoint blockade monotherapy has been disappointing in human CCA. The presence of cancer cells uh, promote activations of cytotoxic T lymphocyte or CTL with consequent tumor lysis. One way in which uh, cancer cells overcome T cell cytotoxicity is by induction of immune checkpoints. Hence, in tumor biology, immune checkpoints such as PD1 or program DES1 or, and its ligand PDL1 are uh, important immune resistance mechanism, which limit T cell cytotoxicity. This uh, immune checkpoint can be activated by cancer cells themselves or by host immune cells, such as tumor associated macrophages or TAMs. Although we know that uh, CCA have abundance of TAMs, the immunobiology of CCA has yet to be defined. To study immunobiology of CCA, we developed a syngenic orthotopic mouse model of CCA. Mnuin CCA uh, catawumpa cells, known as SB cells, have abundant PDL1 expressions compared to normal, canon, uh, normal mouse canonjocyte and can be implanted into a mouse, creating a syngenic orthotopic transplant model of CCA, of CCA leading to a large tumor with multiple nodules four weeks following implantations. Uh, these uh, mice developed large tumor with typically one dominant nodules that can be easily separate from the adjacent liver. This enables study of the immune microenvironment of the tumor as well as the adjacent liver and thus is an ideal model to study the immunobiology of the desmoplastic malignancy. Interestingly, SB cell implantation, which have uh, abundant PDL1 expressions into PDL1 knockout mice, result in a significant uh, reduction in the tumor burden compared to wild type mice. This result suggests that PDL1 positive host immune cells must be essential in CCA progression. Although flow uh, cytometry analysis of murine CCA demonstrates that PDL1 is uh, expressed on myeloid derived suppressor cells or MDSCs and uh, dendritic cells or uh, um, DCs, the predominant source of PDL1 in murine CCA is TAMS. To corroborate these findings in human CCA, we co stain uh, for PDL1 and CD68, a macrophage marker, and PDL1 cytokeratin 19 or CK19, a CCA marker, in a human resected CCA specimen. We demonstrate that uh, PDL1 is predominantly expressed on macrophages rather than cancer cells. Moreover, murin CCA uh, tumors have a significant increase in both PDL1 recruited TAMs as well as PDL1 resident TAMs. However, the uh, predominant uh, the preponderance of TAMs in murin CCA is uh, uh, are recruited as you can see on this graph. To summarize what we have shown uh, this far, host PDL1 immune cells are essential for CCA tumor progressions. TAMs are the predominant source of PDL1 in CCA, and majority of these TAMs uh, are recruited. Having demonstrated that PDL1 recruited uh, TAMs are essential in CCA tumor progressions, 
We hypothesize that uh, depletions of PDL1 recruited TAMs may restore the anti tumor immune response and result in the uh, reductions on the CCA tumor burdens. To address this hypothesis, we first implanted uh, SB cells into wild type mice or CCR2 knockout mice. Four weeks after uh, SB cell implantations, uh, mice were sacrificed and the tumor were characterized. Interestingly, although our data uh, demonstrates that recruited terms are essential in CCA progressions, CCR2 knockout mice which are uh, devoid of recruited macrophages, had a similar tumor burden to wild-type mice. We also conduct a therapeutic study where uh, two weeks after SB cell implantations, mice were treated with the, anti, uh, with the inhibitor of macrophages, anti-CSF1R, for colony-stimulating factor one receptor. After two weeks of therapy, mice were sacrificed and tumors were characterized. The efficiency of TAMS inhibitions was confirmed. However, uh, similar to our observation in CCR2 knockout mice, CSF1 inhibition did not reduce CCA uh, growth in mice. Uh, this was surprising and uh, led us to refine our hypothesis. Hence, our refined hypothesis was that uh, deple depletions of PDL1 recruited TAMs may result in the emergence of a cell type which mediates tumor evasion. Such a cell type could be a resident TAMs, which may increase in response to, uh, recruited, to depletions of recruited TAMs. Another possibility is the emergence of another uh, immunosuppressive myeloid cells populations, such as MDSCs. Indeed, MDSCs were inversely correlated in, uh, so with survival in human CCA, and moreover, uh, similar to TAMS, MDSC are capable to induce a strong uh, anti-tumor immune microenvironment, and uh, with consequent tumor progressions. We did not observe a change in resident TAMs in tumor from CCR2 knockout mice. Interestingly, uh, we observed an increase in uh, MDSC in CCR2 uh, knockout tumor. MDSCs are a bone marrow derived immature myeloid cells from a macrophage lineage, which are LY6C positive, or from granulocyte lineage, which are LY6G negative, uh, positive. The preponderance of uh, MDSCs in the CCR2 uh, tumor were uh, LY6G uh, positive. Mass cytometry analysis of uh, CSF1R treated uh, SB tumor revealed a compensatory infiltration of GMDSC compared to the control. These observations highlight that prevention of macrophage recruitment of and or uh, pharmacologic macrophage inhibitions by anti-CSF1R promotes a compensatory infiltration of GMTSC and counteracts the potential anti-tumor effect of eliminating pro-tumor macrophages in urine CCA. The presence of GMDSCs in human CCA tumor microenvironment was confirmed by flow cytometry, as you can see on this graph from the different patients with uh, CCA. Using uh, Hyperion imaging technology, we observed the close interactions between CD8 T cell in red and uh, MDSC in blue. This promote, uh, this supports a potential CD80 cell inhibitions by MDSCs in human CCA. Having demonstrated this uh, compensatory emergence of GMDSC, we next wonder whether um, dual inhibitions of macrophages and MDSCs improve survival in murine CCA. To address this, we again employ our orthotopic uh, model. 
Two weeks after SB cell implantations, mice were treated with the following immunotherapeutic combinations, TAMS inhibitions using anti-CSF1R, GMDSC inhibition using anti-LY6G, the immune uh, checkpoint blockade using PDL1, and dual inhibitions of macrophages and GMDSCs using anti-CSF1R and anti-LY6G. As we know that immune checkpoint blockade monotherapy is not effective in CCA, we also uh, tested the combinations of TAMS plus MDSCs inhibitions with immune checkpoint blockade using anti-PD-1. Indeed, we observed a significant uh, increase in urine survival with the dual inhibitions plus immune checkpoint blockade, as you can see with this uh, orange line. To, uh, to conclude, to conclude, uh, PDL1 positive TAMS increase in CCA tumor progressions and uh, promote exhaustion of CTL, which uh, CCA progressions. However, depletions of TAMS promote uh, compensatory emergence of GMDSCs and uh, dual inhibitions, TAMS plus uh, GMDSCs, potentiate the uh, immune checkpoint blockade. Uh, effect with uh, consequent CC, uh, reductions in the CCA tumor burden. I would like to acknowledge uh, all the RISV lab, so Dr. Young, Dr. Wong, my uh, mentor, Dr. Sumer, uh, Rizvi Sumera, all the GORES lab, and all the collaborators, especially Dr. Edong Dong, and also uh, the uh, Colangio Carcinoma uh, Foundations for the uh, award I received this year.